Scotland come into week four of this year's Six Nations Championship with the Calcutta Cup safely secured back at Murrayfield. But how will they go against Italy in Rome? Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you throughout the championship and beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Today, in this video, I'm going to be looking at what I think the Scotland team is going to be to face Italy this coming Saturday. But before we go there, let's just have a little chat about how they did against England in the previous game. Obviously, a comprehensive win in the end, and they were lethal on attack and just managed the game superbly well after the first 20 minutes. As soon as they got their noses in front, that only looked like there was going to be one winner. And I want to separate the difference here between performance and how they got through the game, because I think Scotland's performance could still go way, way higher than that. OK, so I don't think they performed amazingly well, but they still won comfortably against England and, and were just lethal when they had their chances. So that's no disrespect to Scotland. Even if anything, it's a lot of respect. So, however, Elko and myself went into that game in great detail. We'll link it up there. Go and check that one out if you want to see what we thought of that Scotland-England game from the third round. Some quick squad updates here. Out go WP Nell, in comes Javen Sebastian and the tight head. And also coming in, in, in is Rory Sutherland, Lions test start in Loosehead. Uh, no Looseheads are dropping out, so I'm not sure if that's covering in some potential injuries or what. I'm not sure. Also out is Alex Craig to replace by Marshall Sykes. Jamie Doby is also in. Again, I think he's a scrum half. And again, I don't think any scrum halves have left the squad. So again, that might be covering potential injuries in that department. But the big one, the big loss for Scotland, injury that happened in the England game is Sione Tuopolotu out for the tournament now, leaving a massive hole in the Scotland midfield. How are they going to fill it? Let's take a look. We will start with the forwards. And I've seen, you know, so there's some conversation online about potential rotation, about, you know, uh, how and also how Italy could be a banana skin. I don't think there's any room for rotation here. They've had a rest week. I think Scotland will be picking their best side that they think they can to take to Rome and beat Italy. These are the forwards that I think that are guaranteed to keep their place from the previous round, and it's a lot of them. I think all these guys played well. A few people I want to pick out, Xander Fagus and tight head, I think is becoming possibly, certainly in the conversation of being the best tight head in this competition. I want to pick out Cummins in the second row, who was physical throughout, just made himself a colossal uh, pain in the ass, basically, against England and was, was absolutely sensational. Richie is the only one who I think maybe won't keep his place. And he played well against Scotland, but I think potentially they might want to go with a bit more heavy carry type back row. Breakdown will be less of a factor against the Italians. Maybe that's that's the kind of conversation that will be going around that selection. Um, and what do I think? I think they're going to go. I think Matt Fagus is going to come back in. I think they are going to go for the slightly more uh, physical play to start off with, try and batter through these Italians and, and get a lot of front football. Um, but yeah, hard luck on Richie not get, keeping his place. But I just think it's a horses for courses kind of selection there. OK, into the backs. And these are the players I think will definitely keep their places. And it's everybody, basically, apart from the injured Tua Pilotu, everybody, because they all played great against England. And they're all, I believe, that's available at the moment, the best players in their positions. So the big question, though, is who is going to play 12? And Scotland are blessed. They've got a lot of good options here. Will they go with Cam Redpath, Finn Russell's uh, sort of partner at 10 and 12 for Bath? It was a question mark whether I thought they might start the competition with Redpath there and move to a Pilotto out one. So I think that's a very strong uh, option. They've got Rory Hutchison, who's a beautiful player for Northampton in the Premiership. And he is, you know, he's really skillful, really fast, plays almost all of his rugby at 12 now as well having moved in from further out. Another great option. And the third option, Stafford McDowell. Firstly, Stafford, great name. I've got an uncle, Stafford. Not my real uncle, just my dad's mate. 
Um, but he is uh, a big, heavy, heavy, heavy carrying centre. So, again, this, Scotland have got the um, the benefit here of being able to pick players based on what their strengths are for this fixture. Do they want a skillful player? Do they want someone who's going to control the game? Do they want a runner? Or the, do they want a powerhouse to go through the middle? The great thing about Tua Pelota was he was kind of all three of those things. So, what do I think? I think they are going to go with settled combinations. I think the Russell-Redpath combination at Bath is working so well that I can't see them going with any other option. I think it just makes the most sense. Makes the most sense to me anyway, obviously. Okay, on to the bench and the front row replacements will remain the same. Uh, has to be said, they've all done brilliantly off the bench. Especially, I'm going to pick out Miller Mills, who was expected to struggle against Joe Marler last time out and absolutely didn't. He locked down the scrum and did a brilliant job. I've been in that situation myself plenty of times when you're expected to be under pressure, you're expected to lose. And man, that gives you some motivation. And I've also been on the other side of it where you're expected to be dominant and expected to kill the opposite number. And, you know, it's a very difficult difficult thing psychologically it's it's a it's a very important thing in the front row to have your head straight and Miller Mills definitely had that against Marler in the last game Skinner Christy Horn all do great things from the bench um Healy covering 10 and I am going to go with McDowell just as a point of difference I think if they went with Hutchison it would be kind of same same in terms of him and Redpath so I think McDowell gives them a point of difference if they want to carry, you know, some more heavy carrying through the midfield. If they need that, then he can come on and certainly provide it with everybody else pushing out. So that's what I think. What do I want to see from this Scotland team in the game against Italy? Firstly, I want to see them uh, be professional. I just think this is a game where they've got to go out and show that they've got an elite mindset. This is a game that people have talked about as being a potential banana skin, which you know, I think is disrespectful to Italy, a team that have just gone to France and got a draw that probably should have been a win or could have been a win. I think Scotland need to show that they can perform week in, week out, no matter who the opposition, whether they've got a massive grudge against them like, like previous times or whether it's Italy, where there's no real history. So that's what I want to see from Scotland. Elite mindset. I want to see them go about this in a super professional manner. And if they do, I'll have them as favourites, but they need to be able to do that. What do you think? What do you think at home? Is this the team that Gregor's going to pick? The 12 being the obvious big selection. Do you think he might rotate players? Do you think he might need to freshen up the squad a little bit and give other players more game time? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.